All right, so we're actually going to be doing the interviewing today. Oh, we'll that's be interviewing fine. as a team. This <laughs> <laughs> lady. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can taste it. <laughs> okay, so um, we were talking. I nobody knows, but I'm like I've been here since the beginning. Not really the beginning. <laughs> But like the middle of the beginning, I'd say, <laughs> yeah. at least a couple years in. Yeah, but I kind of, I would hang around a little bit. I'm like a silent investor, just not real silent and no investing. <laughs> but I, I get to reap the benefits of like a silent <laughs> investor. <laughs> I get the rewards. Um, so today's podcast is going to be about racing is too good for its own good. <laughs> right now, and the downfall of drag racing and this economic downturn we have Ooh, did you say yeah. e- economic but i said economic i didn't know that i didn't know what are you, did you, you, said, you well, said economic welcome to the nbi show <laughs> <laughs> i tried to say economic but I, there's a lot of words coming out at one time and i got stumbled up and i said economic you're just really excited dude. i am man this is i've been i mean i see everybody else coming on here and all the vertical videos on instagram and like That's i watch Theo Vaughn and all of them, you know, they got their podcast, and you're like a young, more handsome Theo Vaughn oh, thank you. without the lesbian haircut. <laughs> and you got all these race car people on here. And I used to be a race car driver, so I like to come on <laughs> yeah, here. You're a retired, you're professional. <laughs> Well, you're a professional. I was cousin. a semi-professional race car driver. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's gonna pick up that ex, comment. Up. Ex semi-professional race car driver, and now turn professional boyfriend, <laughs> cousin, <laughs> brother. Yeah. Dude, do the family tree thing, whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, I was really wanted. I, I really wanted to do it for a while, but I I just never did. I wanted to rig at Ancestry.com <laughs> and then honestly mail it to you. That'd be messed up. <laughs> Awesome. I would have thrown it away. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never let that get out. <laughs> I would have died with. I would have went down with the shit. Dude. I would have died with my secret. <laughs> You're actually second. Oh cousin. gosh. <laughs> okay, so do you want to start the show off right and introduce yourself and us? Yeah, we can. We can yeah. leave all that there. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one's gonna be a mess. Oh yeah, you might, you might as well turn that timer off. We don't, we don't need timer. We're going so, uh, over. <laughs> Ricky, can you hear me, Ricky? Loud and clear. Okay, Rick's Rick. in. Rick's in. He's okay. buckled up. Um, yeah. So we got we got uh, Nick and Alex Taylor. Which I, you don't I, have to I, introduce I, us like that. I, know, I was, I was just you could say Nicky Bobby and Alex yeah, Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. It's too separate. Is it? Way separate. Very <laughs> separate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I didn't. I just mm-hmm. introduced you like you were married. Oh Dang my gosh. gosh. Yeah. yeah brother, <laughs> brother, sister, cousins. <laughs> yeah, we, there's a very. So we're in Kentucky mom. now. That don't matter. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I, I've I've known Nick a pretty long time. We got a Nick. Um, I guess we got you at a PRI. Is twenty nineteen? No, got you got me at the open house. That's right. You just showed. I up. ordered the cage kit from you, and I picked it up there. Yeah, that's right. And then it's been history ever yeah, since. You never left, and then you know, it worked out alright. <laughs> yeah, PRI. You kind of like the open house was the introduction, but PRI was where like you got stuck with me. Yeah, we really. It was awesome. And, yeah, we rode scooters, scooters and. and Tore up the Airbnb and uh, what's yeah. his name? Uh, Nick David yeah. almost died. Farlow almost died. Well, that's that's um, any that's weekend every week. That's any weekend with um, Farlow. <laughs> yeah, that was like the PRI for the books. That one was really fun. We had a great time. I hear all about your guys' like great PRIs. And yeah. <laughs> well, you're always stuck working. All of my <laughs> all of my good PRIs is when Alex still ignored me and hated me. <laughs> And it was all your good PRIs was when you was looking at Alex in her booth signing her stuff. Yeah, like, like man, I'm gonna drug that girl one day. <laughs> I can never get close enough. <laughs> she wouldn't even let me that close. Yeah, finally, you got close enough, drugged her. Yeah. <laughs> then the rest is history. I guess. Now we're here. Yeah, and there's a great debate on the internet of yeah. what you are and how you well, got there. A lot of the best. The best thing is when people think that I'm like her brother, and she's like, "Yeah, we've hidden him for 28 years or 29 years." Decided to just come out now. Decided to let him out. <laughs> well, look how fair skinned you are. You know what I mean? They were protecting you from yeah. the sun. <laughs> your his his daughter today asked me, "Nikki, Bobby, do you still have your sunburn?" I'm like, "I got sunburn like three years ago here, Zaya." <laughs> Throwing shade. That's cool. Uh, 
Yeah. So I met you guys a few years ago and then quickly basically just lived here in between street races and track races and just my, I was going to say a cuss word. Can we cuss? Do we bleep it out? You can't. You do whatever you want. My shit show that you call a life. <laughs> and then. You had a great life. I, d- I did and I still do. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But. No, nah, it's, it's been fun to, it's been fun to watch you change direction and do different things. I'm really proud of you. Thanks. Yeah, you're doing a lot of my direction's been funneled by you. I don't know about that. I remember the fir- one of the first times I talked to you, you're like, you're going you're gonna to need to get into parts. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm Jesse James. You're going to be like West Coast Choppers. And you're like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I am. He's like, I want to do that too. You're not, no, it's don't do it. Yeah, get into parts. And here I am. And yeah, now you're selling parts. Getting in parts. <laughs> Dreaming of more parts. Yeah, it's a way better business. Yeah, model. I'd rather just put in all the creativity into my cars. Yeah. Yeah, I feel not, like. not to others. Nope. Yeah, no, yeah. I'll keep it all to myself. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough taken from me. I'll keep it to myself. You do from now start on. to feel like that though, yeah. like that you're giving. You know, it's like, man, we we wasted the good surprise on you. you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know, what yeah. movie was that? It was uh, that was uh, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Yeah, 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 I'm saying, yeah. and they're like, oh, it was just you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel um, I'm stingy now. I've learned to be selfish in healthy ways. Yeah, no, that's a good. There's good boundaries in that. Yeah. And, so, and then, you know, you finally, I mean, you schemed for years. We, I mean, we talked about you dating Alex for yeah, a really Yeah, we really time. did. I told her, I'm like, you know that I've had a crush on you for so long. And she's like, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you were mean to me. You hated me. I'm like, that's how guys flirt. She's yeah, like, it's not with me. Yeah. Not with me. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So you, you got, you finally got the chick. Yeah, I got an Alex like a little over a year ago. Yeah, that's good. Oh. I see you guys got your method. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just collect people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah, come with us. I mean, that's what happens. We're gonna drink Kool Aid later. Yeah. <laughs> no. Except he feeds you whiskey and steaks, not Kool Aid. It's a little it's better. Way here. better plan. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it. It. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Yeah. I, you don't have to do that. He has to do this, but you don't have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, do you, are you sure you don't? Want, you sure you want me to do it? You don't. You don't I have did, to have me do it. I did ask him. Are you sure? If I do this podcast with you, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, some people now will use my little bit of what I have and then try to use it to like to like sprinkle some on me so they can try to rope her in, you know, yeah. like they bait and trap that me. Wasn't even it. I was just like, you sure, you sure you don't want to do this by yourself? Well, I mean, I think that's just that's like that might have been what you were thinking. Like you don't want that to happen oh, or whatever. Yeah. That She's like, oh no, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I wasn't worried about that. But there was somebody that did that. I won't mention names. <laughs> it happens, man. <laughs> so, so what? So what made you? Well, well, this is a question for both of you. We'll let him go, and then you can go. But what, ladies first. Well, that's fine. What? Um, <laughs> however you want to do it. <laughs> what? Um, what got you into drag racing? What made you want to do that? He said you first. I don't know. I was being polite, but that's fine. Um, my dad, just like pretty much anybody else, my dad. He was a big time bracket racer. I mean, he traveled a lot, bracket raced, all that. He had a Chevelle, a 70 Chevelle SS, big block car that he raced. Um, that's why it's like my dream car. I have a Chevelle now, it's not a 70, and I'll probably get rid of it, but I really want a 70. Um, he raced when I was a kid, ended up getting rid of that car. Him and my mom split up, and then he ended up getting a third gen, which I recently bought back, and your wife raced, and we had some good times in. Um, but he bought that third gen when I was in like second grade and like, I never realized it like the past few years, I didn't really realize where like my love for street cars came from. Like my dad and I always thought street cars were cool, but he always had a, like, I always thought of him as a race car guy because he's a bracket racer. But then I look back and like the silver car was, it always had a Kenwood stereo and speakers and full interior, like full exhaust street tires, but it had nitrous and a small block aluminum heads, like all that stuff back in like. 2000 was like yeah awesome you know it was like one of the first cars cars i ever saw with nitrous like it was right when fast and the furious came out so nitrous became like this big you deal your dad was the coolest oh man ever. i'm like dad hit the button it's gonna get blurry right and he's <laughs> yeah. like no nigga, it's still a 305 at the time but i'm like we got nitrous <laughs> your nitrous doesn't work right dad <laughs> but i mean he got that car and like we drove it everywhere like we drove it to brown county like he would drive it there race it we'd drive it home and like that like, must have subliminally stuck in my head because I always loved street cars since then, even though I thought of like us going. I always wanted to do race car stuff, but I always made sure my car was a street car. And now it's like street cars made this huge return. And it's like, 
I never knew where my love for like Dragon Drive came from or like why I wanted to do that. But I think that's why like my whole childhood I grew up doing that, driving yeah. to the track, racing, all that. And I think that's where I like street racing too. But we did bracket racing. I like I started out racing by bracket racing. I had a Malibu G body, the Malibu. It wasn't Malibu back then, but um, Malibu bracket. Yeah, Malibu bracket. <laughs> but I did bracket racing my junior and senior year of high school, and I was like, Dad, I don't want to do this anymore. Like we're spending, you know, we didn't have money. Like we had nothing, and we're spending all this money on one ten race gas and to double enter buy back and all that. I'm like, we're going and doing the same thing every weekend. I want to do something different. Like. I, I told him, I was like, I would rather try to make my car faster and come here every Wednesday and test and tune and not race anybody than come do the same thing every Sunday. <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm not knocking bracket racing because it is a great way to, for anybody to race and a great introduction to teach you the fundamentals of racing, but um, that's when I bought my first LS. Like, I was building this 406 and all that, and I sold all that and bought an LS and Holly FI and all that, but and then I just took off from there. So that's, cool. that's what got me into racing. Yeah. And my dad had a lot, a lot of, like, uh, good friends that raced, too. So, like, we were surrounded by a lot of people that taught me a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I saw the community aspect of it. Too. Yeah, yeah, I loved cool. all that. So, yeah. Your turn. <laughs> uh, I always start mine the same way because my dad, which my dad built street rods. And so he grew up in Southern California at, like, the right place, right time. And then moved to Arkansas, and then him and my mom had uh, Dennis Taylor Restoration. So they did fiberglass wheelies <clears> and... Fords and that's things cool like that. and they did production so like um you know he built over a thousand cars whether it be turnkey or roller and that was his business uh he sold that in like 2007 sold the fiberglass side and around that time he started getting back into drag racing but he did nostalgia drag racing so like gassers and things like that and so um, we would go and crew with him and follow along and then in 2007 he sold one of his last fiberglass bodies that he had he built uh, 33 Willys High Boy and traded that. He had it up for sale. And uh, Denny Terzic, who had the 2007 Drag Week winning Camaro, had that car for sale at the same time. And that was kind of a pretty big car. It was a very big car in the drag and drag world when that was starting. Because in 2007, it was the first seven-second street car to run Drag Week. So that was that car. And so he called Dad and wanted to trade the Willys for the Camaro. And... Um, that's where I love drag and drive. And that's where, like, I started loving drag <coughs> racing. It's because, like, he got that car. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, I dubbed myself crew chief. And <laughs> I love that car. And then they sold it. And it absolutely, like, crying. Like, I was te they totally brought the tears as they are pulling out of the driveway. Um, but right before they'd sold it, they dubbed it Bad Marrow. One of our friends did. And they got the license plate that said Bad Marrow. And as I got older and it was time for me to get a car... My mom had a 68 Camaro, and she had just, like, had a little fender bender, and it sat on the table. So it was getting close to time for me to, like, get my first car, and I really wanted to do Drag Week. At the time, it was only Drag Week. That was only Drag and Drive. And uh, so Dad and I, like, and Mom, they're like, if you have, like, we'll give you this car if you help build it. Um, so we started building my Camaro. It was supposed to just be a high school car when I was 16, and then it snowballed. He was like, do you want to do Drag Week? We could build it to do Drag Week. So... They gave me the license plate that came off of the 67 yeah. Marrow. So that became my bad Marrow. And uh, that's how like that car came to be. And it just snowballed. Like one thing turns into another. I ended up driving it to high school, raced it all the way through high school. Like I'd show up in the parking lot with, it ended up being a twin turbo car sitting, a twin turbo LS sitting in the parking lot with a parachute and drag radials. And that's just where like it just one thing turned into another and it snowballed. So started from dad and then it was just like, Cars were the only thing I knew. Like, I never knew a life where, like, vacations weren't about cars and the conversation <laughs> wasn't about cars and trips weren't about cars. So it's just a natural progression. No, I, I can very much relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, So with the drag and drive stuff, you did you that, you didn't even, like, bracket race or go to the racetrack. It was just, like, we're going to build a car just to do drag and drive. Like, yeah, and at the time, like, drag week was um, kind of like a freak show, you know? Like yeah, it wasn't very big. It yeah. wasn't. You only saw one, in the magazines and on videos. Yeah, there was one drag, drag and drive event a year. And like I said, like, we started, um, when I really started, like, being around the track was just regular, you know, like, hot rod reunions and things like that, like nostalgia drag races. Um, but drag and drive was just, like, 
it just was so cool to me. I remember watching 1320 video, like when they do the coverage on it. At the time, they just print a DVD out, and that's what you would do. Yeah. It wasn't, you know. And anyway, so I, I loved, loved that. And uh, yeah, my first event was I was 16 with my mom. My mom was my co-pilot, not my dad. And we had this brand new Camaro that my dad, like, I had made probably five passes in. My dad just drove me and my mom to Bowling Green, dropped us off in a brand new, barely tested car. I just turned 16 and I'd been down the drag strip like five times and then did a thousand mile trip. <laughs> and raced for five That's days. awesome. <laughs> and a lot of trust in me looking back. So <laughs> That's a really cool story. It was cool. It was cool. That's how I learned to tune too. Cause like, he's like, well, I'm not going to be there to help you. So here's Holly. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Necessity <laughs> always drives. Yeah. yeah let's start with drag and drive. So, oh, well, okay. So, a question for both of you again, and you can go first this time, then let oh, Nick okay. go. So, like, <laughs> <He> there's, <said. laughs> there's, there's always like, uh, I think with anything that you love, you kind of get you, you open the door to it, and then there's something that keeps you coming back, mm -hmm. right? Like, what was that for you? What, what made you want to keep doing it? When I did my first one in 2013, it was a really rough time getting into it because so back story i um at the time it was 2012 when like we were building the car and bing shift and like forums and stuff like that were very popular yeah. and so i started posting about the car on forums not because that was social media and like trying to get anything out of it like that wasn't the thing at the time you know i was just i saw that there was the unofficial official drag week forum and i wanted to be a part of it because there was like a really cool community with that and uh, so I started posting, and I showed up, not expecting anybody to know anything, but people recognized me in the car from the forums. And long story short, I ended up, they told me I couldn't race when I got there because I was 16, I wasn't 18. So I ended up having to, like, kind of fight to get into it. They made an exception and let me run. And uh, the amount of people that rallied around me when that was happening at that event was really cool. And... Um, that was just one side of the community. But like all of a sudden, all these people I didn't know were like, well, if she can't race, well then we're not gonna race. And so like, they're like, we feel totally comfortable racing by her on the track. But then as the week went on, it was one of the coolest weeks I'd ever experienced with like the coolest group of people and just the atmosphere that that event had. I didn't have a lot to compare it to, you know, but like, I just love the people, the concept of taking something that really isn't supposed to be on the street and putting it on the street. And yeah. It was just all of that combined. And That's really cool. Just stay like that. Just yeah. Have a really good group of people on that. What's what? What makes you keep coming back, big guy? Uh, <laughs> That's a tough question, but uh, if I knew that, I'd life would be a lot simpler. <laughs> um, so, what made me do? I mean, are you just talking about drag and drives or just yeah, racing just in general? Racing uh, in general. Well, I mean, I, well, mine, mine <laughs> relates a lot to drag and drive too, and it I think it relates to just all racing in general. But like. My first drag and drive was 2015, and it was right after, like, my car went through the LS, you know, transformation. I went from small block to LS, and then I uh, I fabbed up my first turbo kit. My buddy, Mark, uh, he welded it for me, and, like, I had no idea what I was doing with Holly. My, I first got the turbo kit done. I tried to run it with a one-bar map since there were, like, 36 degrees of timing, and, like, just I can't believe I didn't melt the motor down. <laughs> but my buddy, John Anderson, he helped me. Like, we drove my car around the south side of Indy for – two months every day after work just ripping on it all around like it didn't have any of the sensors it should he tuned it basically off fuel and spark it didn't have an intake temp sensor didn't have fuel pressure sensor nothing and then like it it ran 998 and i remember thinking like nobody i knew had a nine second car at that time like nobody i knew even had a turbo car at that time and, like 2015 was right when turbo ls like took off yeah. you know and i was like i just it was something that everybody told me I shouldn't do because they're like, it's not going to work. It's, you know, there's no way this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then that same year, the earlier in the year, I had gotten some trouble, <laughs> just you know, like running around with the wrong crowd. So, like, I decided, like, I'm not – I got arrested. And I'm like, I'm never – I remember sitting in just – I never – I didn't go to jail or anything, but I got – I had to sit in the holding cell for, like, 30-something hours. I'm like – if I get out of here, I'm never like I'm never coming back here. I'm not doing anything that wastes my time ever again. Cause like I just wanted to get out and do something. Like it reminded me of all the things I could be doing. Yeah. So like that's when I just hit racing so heavy and I was like, I'm gonna do drag week. And I was on the waiting list. I never got called or anything, but I still drove to St. Louis anyways. And like mind you, I'm like 
21 and like I had no money whatsoever but I'm like I driving to St. Louis to me was like going across the country like I, yeah, <laughs> I didn't go out of state much at that time you know <laughs> you just had to drive from Indianapolis but yeah, yeah I mean it's, it's five hours but that's like to me that's across the country at, at that age and like at that point in my life I'd never been that far you know like I'd gone on vacations places but it wasn't nothing like that and we went me and my buddy Wesley went there and we were like the last person to get called in tech because they told us, you know, they've never turned anybody away or whatever. But I just remember going there and everybody's like, so you're not even in yet. And I'm like, no. And they're like, what if you break down? I'm like, we'll fix it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what else. I don't have another choice. And we went there and we had like the best week of, like ever. We just, we had fun. We had like no expectations. Like I just wanted to be a part of it. You know, like the community, like you said, you just wanted to be a part of it. And I just wanted to be a part of it. I just wanted to have fun. It was like the week of my life. I ended up getting third in my class. Like, ran my personal best ET. Like, my car did, like, this crazy three-wheel motion wheelie. And it was, like, best week of my life. I'm, like, I'm doing this for now on, you know. And, like, every it was funny because all the OG guys around Indy were, like, your car's not going to make it, dude. You know, it's the wear and tear. And, like, they're thinking, like, my rear gears are just going to wear out magically. And, like, the transmission's not going to hold up. And it's going to overheat and all this. And you're never going to make it. Like, you're going to be broke down in the middle of nowhere with no help and no money and this and that. I'm like, screw it, dude, I'm doing it. And then, like, the next year, all those guys signed up to do it. Because, like, oh, if he can do it, we can do it. And none of them ever ended <laughs> up doing it. If that raggedy thing yeah. can make it through there. <laughs> if the fire spider could do it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I had this thing on my firewall called the fire spiders. This is red terminal with all these red wires coming off of it. Like I, had no, like, I did two drag weeks. I had no relays in my car. I had, like, nothing. I mean, like, my ignition was key on straight 12 volts. Like, my fan was straight to 12 volts with key on. Like, I don't know how my car, like, didn't burn down. <laughs> and finally, I put a relay panel on it when the fuse block, the factory fuse block, like, melted off my firewall. <laughs> While I was driving around with Avery Hansen one night in the south side of Indy, it, like, melted off my firewall <laughs> because it just got so hot. That's funny. Yeah. It's a lot of good times. But that's what keeps me coming back. And, like... It, it it dropped off a little for a drag and drive for me. Like, I went away from that and got into, like, no prep and then, like, backside and then street racing, and then I found my way back to drag and drive. I think it's interesting, though. Like, when you ask that question, it's like you go back to the start of, like, why did you start going back then? Yeah. But that progresses as, you know, like, that's, what, 10 yeah. years. And so, like, your reasons for coming back, I think, progress and change as you grow. And, you know, now it's, like... The, competitive. It's yeah, I just so want to win now. You know, and it's, like, just the idea of being able to set a goal and go for it like when me and my dad built the 55 like the idea of setting this goal to run sixes going from you know 850 cert cars and like going to chase that goal and, like having that that's the what fun part too about dragon yeah. drives because like there's not that ceiling you know you're not you're mm -hmm. kind of in class rules but you're also just like chasing your personal best and so like you're I think the reason for coming back also kind of changes and grows yeah I think yeah dragon drives a lot about personal fulfillment you know, it's like doing the rally she did. Like, a lot of people do it for personal fulfillment. Like, that's where it was for me at first. Like, I just wanted to be a part of it. And it's just like any other racing. I was just so excited to, like, be able to go racing. Like, me and my dad would sit and talk in the winters. Like, one winter, we're going to save up enough money. We're going to go racing in Florida during the winter. And, like, to me, I'm like, we'd have to be rich to do that. Dad. <laughs> and, like, now I race year-round. And it's just so crazy to see, like, where you start, where you come, and, like, why you did it. And, like... And how it changes, like she said. At first, I just wanted to be a part of it. And, like, it was everything I could do just to be a part of it. And now it's like, I want to go win. Yeah. Now I'm competitive about well, it. Well, I think I think a lot of people do forget that that when you, they started, really, you just wanted to be a, a, back to that. You wanted to be a part of some, mm -hmm. a community, you know, and then um, and then it does. It escalates rather quickly of, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, I want to be – I want to win. But that's know? why people race in the first place. And I think – some of the people that do it just for the community, they lose sight of why you're racing in the first place. So then, like, when they see somebody grow into being competitive and then they, they feed on, like, that person keeps feeding on the success when they get competitive, I think a lot of people think negatively on that. No, which, uh, yeah, I get that. I, there's, there's, both, there's two sides to it, but... Well, and honestly, like, I that was one of the reasons, like, uh, I was never, like, super interested in drag and drive because, like, I like racing. Like, it's a beat somebody. <laughs> yeah, I just want to beat them. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to line up and, you know, let's let's race, you know? Yeah. So, like, the drag and drive stuff never made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
I don't care if my car can drive that far. I, <laughs> I want to beat you going faster. Yeah, I don't care, you know. Um, but my per, my perspective uh, as I got a little older has changed, and like my business partner Brad and his his mm-hmm. best buddy Brad have have done some dragon drives, and they've done really good. Um, and they've had nothing but like he's like, dude, it's awesome. A blast. You know? It's it's funny though that you say that because when I first started, I used to tell people I wasn't competitive. I didn't used to really be that competitive of a person, you know. So I liked going and you know setting my own goals and going after them. And now it catches me every single time I'm doing something. I'm like, I'm like you're really competitive. I'm like, I know, I don't know where it came from. It just came out Screw of nowhere. personal goals. I'm gonna beat you. Yeah. I don't get to race race as much as I want to just because of the way schedules work out. But, like, we were at Roadkill Nights in August. And, like, I got such a rush. Oh, like, man. I just love. She was actually competing in the I race that time. Like, I love competing. Like, this is great. But it's like having both sides to it. And once you're doing Dragon Drive, it's you get so yeah. competitive with yourself. Like, it. it she she tells me all the time. She's like, well, if, you know, if I don't get Uncle Sam done in time or whatever, she's like, just take the silver car. Like. Take something else, like, have a good time. I'm like, if it was 10 years ago, I could do that, and it would be the highlight of my life. Right now, I would be miserable. <laughs> and I yeah. told her that, too, last time I went on Dragon Drive. I'm like, next time, I like, I don't want to do another Dragon Drive till my car is done because it's gotten to a point now where people pay so close of attention to her. If I'm anywhere near the car, they say it's cheating, and, like, they just watch her like a hawk, and it's like, it's not fun. you're just it's a big, fun, big hairy winning, you know, Yeah, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> What is that? Big Car hair? ran good. Yeah, Car yeah, ran yeah. real good. It's big a big hairy American, American winning machine. machine. Yeah, there it is. We found yeah, it. it. We were on <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we synergy. Yeah, yeah. But it's like now I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to go unless like, I don't want to go anywhere unless we're going to try to win because it's like okay, that could just go on forever. But I'll stop it there. Well, but, I do think outside looking in, at it, and we can kind of stay on the drag and draft topic, but it's like um, – it has got more serious. There is a lot more rules than there used to be. You see a lot more people that are interested in doing it. And I think you are. You're bringing out people that want to be competitive. They want they want um, you know rules to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I think that does make the, the people that are just there for a good time really uncomfortable. Like, yes. like well, why does it have to be like this? Yeah. Well, and really, you know, they don't pay out any money. I think no. Sick Week started to maybe pay Race something. Race week. Yeah. Sick week, the first one, I got second and unlimited. I didn't even, I didn't got I got nothing. I didn't yeah. get like I got barely an honorable mention because he was like unlimited cars, who cares if you're here? Like if you're the baddest, come be the baddest. You don't need money. And yeah. it's like I kinda like that, although yeah. I like money also. Well, I don't know. I think that's that's honestly the problem in no prep right now is I think they've paid everybody too well. Oh yeah. And then they've got to like, well, you got, you know, we got to come race. People show up to the gates with their hands out now. Yeah. I haven't even been racing the last year. I see what it's like on Facebook. You know, Facebook has got to be true. <laughs> also, before I forget this, when we were talking about the competitiveness, I want everybody to know Jason is the most nicest, caring, loving, good hearted, warm hearted, welcoming person in the world. But I've seen him at the racetrack. Somebody walk up to him and be like, hey, man, you know, we're in the finals together. You want to split? And he just look at him and be like, nah, man, we're good. <laughs> dead, like, he'll look dead in the windows of the soul and be like, nah, man, we're good. Good luck, though. <laughs> like, no, you're not getting this money. <laughs> I've seen it in person at Muncie, dude. <laughs> and then the guy walks away. He's like, I'm not splitting with him. I'm going to beat him. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we're talking about the split thing. Like, uh, I, I do get it both ways. I understand both ways. Um, and I don't know, man. There, even when we were early on racing, there was a lot of times that, you know, we couldn't afford to be there. Yeah. And, you know, um, it's all a gamble. And I get, like, you know, it's nice to, you know, give people stuff so they can get home, whatever. Like, but, man, I've been there and I've put it all on the line and it's not paid off. Or we've been there and we put it on the line and it has paid off. Yeah. Um, and to me, there's just nothing more exciting than letting go of that button for a big purpose. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> man, we're really gambling here. You it's know? pressure. Yeah. Well, like, I think a lot of people like I us, love that, man. I like the pressure. I do. I love it. And, like, like last year we were racing a guy for 10, for 10 Gs and um, he wanted to split and we kind of weren't interested and. Man, he beat us by like a couple inches, but 
Yeah, that's you, racing. Though. That's racing. Like you know, you got to be okay with it. And and I think even in the no prep stuff, if you take the payout away, a lot of times people say like, "Well, you take the payout away, you know, to fix some stuff." It will, but I mean, look at the drag and drive stuff. These guys are racing for plastic trophies, and mm-hmm. you know, they're spending their life savings. Yeah, because there's a will to win. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think a lot of it goes back to the personal fulfillment of it. You know, same thing. Like it doesn't matter that trophy doesn't physically value it's there's no physical value to it but the 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 self-worth that you put into that is like major you know like that's just like a sign of affirmation that you did what you set out to do yeah yeah it's funny though like when you say that because you are for that like we got plastic barbies one year dude (laughs) painted plastic barbies she beat me Uh, but no, you know, she still like, talked to me though. <laughs> <laughs> like, Checkmate, boy. And, like I forget at the time. I'm like, what event did we like? What event did we do good at? What event did we win? And it's it matters so much in that it moment, does. you know. And then you realize later. I think too. So I I keep thinking of these things while we're talking, and I'm like, okay, I need to say this, but I don't want to get off topic. So like, I'm gonna come There's back. No to, topic. Okay, but I'm coming back to this point because I want to touch this. I want to touch this again when I said that. Even though go. you said there was a topic, there's not. Yeah. yeah, he introduced it. <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> <laughs> like so, when I said it could go on forever, and I was talking about like why I wanted to be competitive, I think now, being older and more wise, um, also her too. She's got a lot going on, and I I now have a lot going on too, and. If we're not going to go somewhere and, like, know that we can be competing for that personal goal. Like, if yeah. we know we're just going to go there and waste our time, which a lot of times we never think because, like, I'm a eternal optimist most of the time. But there's so much other stuff we could be doing. Like, we, we just walked around your shop for 30 minutes, and I didn't even look at a race car. I was just like, dang, this pallet racking's nice, and the way you have this <laughs> organized is nice, and these machines, and, like, I'm looking at all this other stuff, like – I find so much interest in business now and like trying, like seeing the growth in that, that I wouldn't, I don't want to waste my time elsewhere to just go be involved in something. Like yeah. I want to be involved in like growing my business and brand. Did you, so did you ever think this is Alex, did you, did you ever think that you would make a living being a drag racer? Was that like really on your radar? And then you can answer that question too, Nick, but let her go. I don't know, it's weird because, like I said, when I when I started um, drag racing when I was 16, you know, with a Dragon Drive, and I started posting on the forum, it was the weirdest deal when I showed up to that event with people knowing my car and knowing me and knowing the story. And that year, like, something just, like, sparked, and I had, you know, 13, 20, I give them a lot of credit because they, they made a video about me and my car, and it's just, like, it took off. And so um, when I got into that, I... I didn't know about social media. It's 2013. You know, I didn't care about social media. I was still in high school. None of that really mattered, but I was just doing what I loved. I always wanted to keep cars. Like, I wanted my life to be something in the automotive industry, something high performance. But when that all started, I wasn't, it's not like I attacked it with the goal of trying to make it my life. You know, I'm really yeah. lucky. I had a lot of great opportunities, and, you know, my parents when I was younger to help push me into that direction um, and help guide. But I, didn't really know the path that it was going to take, you know, when I started it. I never really set my goal. That's something I tell people all the time. They're like, how do you, how do you get there? I'm like, it was, ac- you know, it was accidental in the sense that, like, I never had a dead set goal that I want to do X, Y, and Z. I never said, oh, I want to host Hard Rock Garage, and I want to drag race, and I want to drive this car, and I want to do that. It's just like, if an opportunity is there, like, I, I go that direction and I take that one. It's just that I know that my love is in high-performance automotive. And so um, I love driving. I love being in the driver's seat. And so that's just where I was like, okay, I know this is the direction that I want to go, and I'm okay if I go over there and then over there and then that direction and back around. And because of that, like, it's <laughs> led to some really cool opportunities. So, no, I didn't know that's what I was going to make my career and lifestyle, but I'm just really lucky that I found what I love young and was able to have that leeway to take those different paths yeah so. that's really cool i could tell you when the 1320 video came out all right yeah he was november on. 2nd 2013 10 07 10 07 a.m i slid into her dms after watching that 1320 <laughs> video 
<laughs> hey, yo, girl. I've been at this a long time, boys. Yeah, I'm telling you. Right there. Ten years. With that Camaro? Ten years. How you doing? Was that Camaro was the color of my hair. <laughs> I was actually, uh, that's right. I might have still had hair then. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> you, try, you knew that. You knew the hair was going to go, so you were trying to get in there while you still had it. <laughs> that was before the hair and the dad bod, man. I felt good. I show her pictures of me back then. She's like, I would have not liked you. I'm like, what? She's like, you look like a D-bag. I'm like, I was a D-bag. <laughs> I really was. Yeah, well, it is It is interesting. You meet people when you need to. Yeah. Right. Okay. We we uh, we talk about it all the time. She's like, because there's like been a couple of times I was supposed to, like, we were supposed to do something or whatever and i was just trying to insert myself into a search sit search situation so i might be able to like get in with her or something you know like make her like me and she's like if you would have came at that time in my life there's no way it would ever would have ever worked out yeah so i'm like perfect good to know so did you think that you were gonna do what you're doing did you um no not really yeah, not really, because I started off doing HVAC, and I just always thought that I would make enough money doing that to do what I wanted to do, like just race a little bit here and there. And then I never thought my passion for racing would grow like it has, even though, like, cars is all I've ever thought about. But then, like, one year, like, I started racing. Like, we were putting on races and stuff, and I'm like, this is just what I want to do. Like, I told my boss, actually, I said – I love working here. He was a great boss, had a great job. I was like, it is actually a disservice for you, to you, for me to be here because I don't want to be here. Like, and it's not you. <laughs> yeah. It's not the work either. Like, it's a great job. Like, a, tr a trade is a great job. But I'm like, I, I can't think about work when I'm here. All I think about is racing and cars. Like, I just, it's, I have to follow my heart and do it. And like, he was cool about it. And I started doing like the fab work. And I always thought I would make my money on labor. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out like that. <laughs> yeah. now, I never thought, honestly, like once I almost gave up on trying to do what I'm doing is when it really like took off because like I kept putting so much, so much expectation into it. And I just like gave into like just doing what I really wanted to do and like enjoying it again. And then it all came full circle. Like I tell her all the time, like if we go do something. I'm like, I still like doing the parts I can still make a living and like design stuff and I don't have to kill myself every day of my life and trade all these hours of my life and not be, you know, it's like, it's like the time versus like your time versus income value. Like how much time are you willing to trade for which amount of income? And I'm like, I want to have the maximum amount of time to keep learning other places rather than just doing a one for one time versus income exchange. Like yeah. it's, it's just it's a big thought. Yeah. And now, now I can like, I'm starting to do it, and now I'm like, I can actually see myself be able to, like, go racing how I really want to go racing. I'll yeah. never have to, never have to, like, rob Peter to pay Paul again to go racing. And that's, like, that's a big accomplishment for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to live in a camper ever again. <laughs> There's a balance to that, though, because I remember, so I went to school for marketing. This kind of also kind of answers that question, plays on what you're saying, but um, I went to school for marketing, and I, when I was getting ready to graduate, like, I was a valedictorian, so telling my teachers, like, I want to go do race car stuff really made no sense to them. You know, I was like, I want to yeah. go race, I want to do this. But I told myself I was going to graduate, and I took the LSAT. I was like, I'm either going to go to law school or I'm going to try racing for a year. And um, it's one of those, that, like, I grew up in the shop, and I had big aspirations. Like, I have big goals. But I was like, I want to be happy. So at the same time, it's like finding that, like, I could have gone and, you know, done the law school route and done that. And that's what I was going to do if it didn't work out. But she's I pretty good her. arguing. What? Pretty good arguing, <laughs> yeah. huh? Uh, no, I was like, I want to. Nick, Nick say there's probably a future in that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she probably could have been a pretty dang good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you're saying, though. It's like finding yeah. what you like, though, that you can still make yeah. you know, a living at and finding a way to mix that together. But It's a constant battle, though, man. Like finding the. Like, how hard to go for or, how, like, trying to rest. Like, do you rest for a day or do you keep going? Like, that's her constant battle. Like, I can make myself rest for a day, but, like, her, she's always trying to, like, she always feels like she's missing something, like major FOMO. And, like, I can get that to a certain extent. But then again, like, I've seen times where, like, me taking a rest, like, pays off majorly and actually opens my mind up to thinking differently on something yeah. else or whatever, you know? Well, and I do think, like, um, 
you know, a lot, a lot of people probably to pick on you outside looking in, they, they probably think that, that what you've done or where you're at now was like an easy thing. And like, oh, yeah. like we were, you know, <laughs> today, like we were, we were just chilling at the house and, you know, you were upstairs on your laptop working a little bit. You were doing so. And like, I'm not that people need to know, like you yeah. work really, really hard to do what you do. Uh, and it's really awesome. Like, you know, like, like I have two little girls at my house and, um, you know, like you're a great role model for them. You know, like you don't, you, you, you earn what you've got right? Right. and you're actually, you know, I shouldn't say actually, but you're very knowledgeable on a race car. You're very knowledgeable on a car. Like it, it's just really refreshing that like for me as a dad that I could be like, Hey man, like girls, if you want to see what a girl can do in the automotive industry, it's really refreshing to watch how you carry yourself, go through life. And that, that I can, you know, my girls, I'm like, you know, you can watch out. Like she does a great job with how she does it. So. Thanks. No, and it's, it's the thing. Like I, uh, I tell people all the time, like, cause technically, you know, all my knowledge and everything comes from my dad and like following him. So I definitely had like really great, you know, um, help getting into it in the sense that I had a really good teacher. My dad was always like, put us on, you know, dirt bikes or go-karts, whatever, like getting, like gave us the opportunities to find stuff and explore stuff and learn. Um, but then it's like, after that, like you have to pick it up and carry it if you want to run with it. That's what I did. You know, I had great start. I still have great help and great people, but it's just that you still have to put your own work in if you want to like carry it out. Like there's no way without like her doing what she does, like, non-stop she would be where she's at like absolutely she there's never a time where she's like oh no i'm not doing it like it's not you can't work right now it's like oh let's get this done let's do this it's like her mind's always on it and like like she's saying too like her dad he's the same way he's like straight up ride or die hey we got to build a car in eight weeks for roadkill nights and he's like of course he doesn't want to do that but yeah. there's no other option it's like just that's it that's the way it is like straight up race car like get it done it's awesome well and i've watched you do the same thing man like i i've watched you put impossible deadlines on yourself and like (laughs) you know like i'm like that's a bad idea (laughs) Um, and then at the end you're like but i was real worried about you you know like uh you know but you you really and honestly the hardest thing to do is you know when you come when you came to that realization that like what you thought you were going to do to make money, mm-hmm. you're like, that's a bad idea. I'm going to redirect. Most people don't redirect. Yeah. They just trudge through it. Yep. Because redirection is like the scariest thing in the mm-hmm. world for most people. Like the people that, in, that you know, sit in these chairs that you go out in the light, in life that you see are really, I, I think that are really successful or to your point, you just, whatever the path of least resistance is, mm-hmm. and there's an opportunity there, you take it, right? Like, let's do it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, with you and you, you know, I'm so proud of you buying those buildings and stuff, watching you go through all that. You're Thanks. like, you know, you took a chance, yeah. right? Like that opportunity came and you're like, I don't know about it, but you, you mm-hmm. did it anyway. Like living in, that's why, you know, we were watching dirt bikes this morning. We were talking a little bit about that. And like, I love that part of my brain, right? Like where it's like, eh, Whatever. Yeah. Let's, screw it. Yeah. Let's do it. You yeah. know? And I think, like, you have to think like that to put yourself in the positions that you guys are in or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. you, you got to be a little stupid, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. Sometimes, and, like, I think it's a lot of pride thing, too. Like, sometimes just letting go and knowing, like, okay, like you're saying sometimes instead of just trudging through it, like, okay, let's rethink it. Like, I think it takes – I don't even know how to say it. I don't know if it's not having a lot of pride or like being having pride and saying, okay, like I have to take a step back now and re. I think that's more humility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't have the words. (laughs) 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 Yeah, the lawyer's saying you don't. It's funny though. It's It's the funny. It's funny the way it works out when you just go for it. I think it's. Yeah, and kind of just, like, accepting. I, I guess I think it was my dad. It is my dad that says it, but, like, not knowing what you're going to do, like, the next day. Like, there, it's – some people are okay with, like, not knowing what tomorrow holds because that opens a lot of doors and you're willing to take a lot of risk on. Um, but then there is, like, if you want that safety and that guarantee and, like, the safety net, then, like, 
you know what tomorrow holds, which has its like benefits, but it also has the downside. It's like a like, limitation. Yeah, you hold yourself back. So that's this part where you're like, is it dumb? Maybe, but is it also like, is it also got a lot of like potential for mm-hmm. great reward? Yeah, also. So. I think that's where like me and her and like her dad and her, just her whole family, like, we get along really well because like when it comes down to doing that stuff, we just do it. Yeah. There's so many times she says, sorry, you know, we had to stay up all night and work on my tranny again, or sorry, you're working on my trailer, or sorry, we had to do this and go out here. I'm like, what else are we going to do? Like, what else am I going to do? Like, <laughs> I tell people all the time, some people see us doing something that looks horrible and they're like, man, you must be miserable right now. And I, like, this is like straight up probably happened a hundred times. And I say the same thing over and over again. They say, man, yeah, you must be miserable. You must've been miserable last week. And I'm like, I mean, it, it's hard when you're doing it, like nothing good comes hard, but, or nothing good comes easy. But I said, if I'm not here doing this, if I wasn't here right now doing this, going through this, you know, tr- trudging through it sometimes, I'd be sitting at home wishing I was here doing this, you know, I'd be watching somebody else doing it, wish, sitting there saying, dang, I wish I was out there changing the trans on the side of the road or, you know, like yeah, thrashing to get a car done. And it's funny because like sometimes when you just go off the beaten path too like you're saying like it opens up other doors like she she said she never really noticed me till i had uncle sam she's like oh i saw like how creative well, you well, like, like really do, does it for you yeah <laughs> big tires weird man it's todd's calling from on todd calling todd back <laughs> he's probably standing right out there the <laughs> yeah Sorry, I just mic, but, no i well i mean i really you know the ultimate chick magnet Third gen. third gen, Camaro. twin turbo. Third I had gen. a third gen Camaro too. You know what I mean? Look where I got. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, she, my wife used to think that third gen Camaros were like the trashiest thing ever. She doesn't like third gen. <laughs> <laughs> but then, she doesn't like G bodies and she doesn't like third gens. Man. And she hates tattoos. Hey Rick, how, how fast? How fast can we get this third seat out? Of here? Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you a really good story. <laughs> <laughs> she she called me one night and she said the weirdest thing just happened. I was like, oh yeah, what? She's like, I was walking out of the store and this guy held the door for me and I walked by him and I saw he had knuckle tats and I I was like, oh thank you. And she's like, I walked on and I thought to myself, what a trash bag. <laughs> and she goes, I realized Nick has knuckle tats. <laughs> and I said, hey, hey, to be honest, I've been sitting here the whole time like those are the worst trashiest knuckle tats. <laughs> 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 covered in that. Uh, <laughs> dinner he's like i was having a really nice dinner until i walked looked over and saw her <laughs> it's funny too because when i first got him i was working here one day cutting apart that mustang and brad sneeder says you know nick i used to think you were just a little ghetto and now with those hand hats i kind of think you're white trash <laughs> <laughs> i said you know what brad because that's perfect that's kind of what i'm going for yeah, like, I'm that's a, just me but yeah, i'm, I'm, here I'm a little it. bit of both <laughs> That's funny. I love my hand tats. Man, she, that chick right there, she must really like you. you know what I mean? <laughs> she, she doesn't like 32 Camaros, yeah. G-bodies, yeah. or crappy <laughs> tattoos. Yeah. Check, check, and check. check. They just kind of grew on me, but... Like a fungus. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Chief calls these? Job stoppers. <laughs> no way I'm getting a job ever again. That's all right, bud. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> We need a job for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, Alex probably looks at like her, but like she looks at her schedule now, and she's like, "Well, this has to get on this. I can't afford to lose Nick. I guess I got to keep him around." It's <laughs> <Like, laughs> pretty handy. Yeah, he kind of makes things a little He's easier. Like that beat up Swift RB9, <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> with some Sharpie on it. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Well, you. Uh, so, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the future holds for like what you're doing now? Do you think you're gonna always do the drag and drive stuff or do you want to try to branch out i know you're really busy with i mean you, your schedule's nuts it's it really is bad like i haven't been home in a while but um i don't know so a dad and i talk about this pretty often um the problem is like we're both very busy and right now like he's got projects and then i have hot rod garage so we film for a minimum of 13 weeks a year and that's in la we live in arkansas so taking on a full race schedule with like say like a series or something like that that's almost impossible right now just time wise and schedule wise um i don't know what i want to do i do like we were talking earlier like i do enjoy and i've really grown to enjoy the more like competition side like actual head-to-head like lineup and race kind of thing 
And so I want to venture into something, you know, that is more like that. I just don't know what that looks like right now. Like where I can go to something and, you know, be able to do it here or there. And yeah. there's, I know there's a lot of events, but a lot of it's like outside of the world that I've been in. So finding something where we fit in and, you know, have a car that's competitive in and things like that. I don't know. Eventually, I do want to. I, I believe we'll still stay drag and drive, like doing drag and drive events, and because I really enjoy it, and like I like the idea of building a car and taking it and doing that. Dad and I have talked about building a new car to take out to a drag and drive, but at the same time, making that car something that could go compete somewhere else. So, in a short answer, I want to branch out. I just don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And like this year, I've got to do all kinds of other stuff too. Like. I got to go land speed racing. Um, I got my A license at Bonneville. So that's averaging 226 is what I did over a mile. And so, like, I really liked that. And, like, I like, I got to just try so many different things. That's really cool. Yeah. I also don't want to lock myself in so much into, like, one thing that I can't go try that other, those other events. Yeah. So it's finding a balance because I just like to, you know, try all the. All it's the like things. a double edged ah. sword. Yeah. I, I would love to see you do something other than that. Like, that would be cool. Like, and I think, you know, what you guys built with your 55, it's a cool car. It, it, it does what you're wanting to do perfectly. But, yeah, you probably need a different car to do something else. And hopefully, like, all the, you know, I know you have a lot of really great sponsors behind you, but on the TV side of things, hopefully they would be behind you to, you know, spread your wings and do other stuff. That would be cool. Like stuff will work its way out, you know, in the next yeah. year or so. But it's just been getting all the craziness under control. That way we can figure out something else, like have the time to take something else on. So yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> what do you want to do, Nick? Do you want to, you want to well, keep your we car were on the wrong about, tire? Or, you know? <laughs> we were just talking about that. We were just talking about that out there. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. I'm at this point right now where – you can insert that clip of Barrett Green here where he was talking about small He's tire. Big tire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's a lot of guys that talk crap about big floppies, but I think they never drove a big floppy. No, nah, they're cool. They're cool. I mean, <laughs> letting off a button and going 1-0 or, like, I've never been sub-1, but I've been 1-0 a bunch of times. Doing that every pass, no matter what, not having to worry if you're going to pedal out of a wheelie or whatever, nobody will ever tell me different whether that's cool or not. Yeah. And I used to be the biggest advocate for small tires. I mean, you know. Like, yeah. I, I'd never had a big tire, anything. And it's like, you can put anybody in that car and, like, let them make a pass, and anybody can go 1-0 to the 60. Just let off a button. Like, anybody. Well, I'm just saying, a lot of my friends, I could put them in my car and just let them go yeah. fast and feel what it's like. You know, like, it's so awesome. But back to, like, what I really want to do, I don't know, because, like, we were just having that conversation. Do I... I really want to get my car done. Like I've basically taken a year and a half off from racing and like, I didn't really have a choice, but it's been like a, it's just the biggest blessing in disguise. You know, like it's driven me to put more effort into my business and like, I've got the buildings out of it and like things are better than ever now. So I'm like, do I keep, you know, suppressing my want to go work on my car and dump some money into my car and like, I'm to the point where I want to take the next step in business and get a CNC machine. So it's like, okay, I can, if right now I can allot this amount of money for the CNC machine and get this going, but like, I know just like with anything else that is going to, you know, just fully envelop my time and focus for who knows how long. And like, yeah, it's an investment and it will pay off. Like I know it will, but am I going to be happy doing that? Like I, I've been super happy the past year. But it's to the point now where, like, will I be happy to keep doing this or do I need to get back to racing? Because, like, racing is, like, my passion. Like, yeah. that's the only reason I'm doing any of the other stuff is so I can go racing. So it's like, I don't know. I'm at that point now where I think I'm just going to get my car running again. Like, that's my plan. And then try to still shell out some for the CNC machine because my 30th birthday is coming up in February. And, like, I really want to be racing on my birthday, which is sick week. So, like, Maybe 30, boys. Yeah, dirty 30, but... <laughs> Let it be noted also, because there is a lot of people that think I stopped Nick from racing. Oh, no, yeah. I get emails yeah. about this. Okay? Who are you ever, yeah, Let people say. Noted, I'm the one that said today, you need to get your car back together. She bought me pistons for my birthday oh, last year. You need know, to get she, this thing going. You need to get back together. I'm tired of the emails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some person says, are you ever going to let Nick get Uncle Sam back to grudge? Let grud Nick yeah. Yeah. get one. back to grudge <laughs> racing? Have I'm like, you first seen of all. Nick's leash? It yeah. is so <laughs> short. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I never grudge race in the first he place. Had them hand tats, that at least got cut in half, yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, so I don't, want, uh, I don't want the blame anymore. 
No, Alex is always pushing me to get my stuff done. But I also, like, you know, as a man, I want to have my act together, too. You know, like, yeah. she doesn't want to be with a loser. I don't I don't want to be a loser, either. So, like, it's well, just – and there's only so many hours in the day, so. Well, and I, I think, like, like, I got – like, when we were – first started racing, you know, it was a really big sacrifice to do it. And, like, we were really hungry to do it. But then – you know, we just seen like, man, this isn't a sustainable mm. option, you know, and, you know, I want it, we wanted to invest in our business so that when we did go to race, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as big of a deal to leave. It was, you know, we, we mm-hmm. had, you know, we were financially able to do it. And like, you have to take a step back sometimes, you know, like, you know, it's not like you're, you know, you're, you're you, yeah. right? It's not like your dad's not helping. You know, your dad's a great dad. But he's yeah. not investing in your business. And mm-hmm. You don't have outside investors. It's just Nicky yeah. Bobby. So, you know, and we kind of had the same thing. It was just, you know, Brad and I and the boys were just getting yeah. with it. And it's okay to take those seasons off from a passion to make it better. Yeah. You know, and I, and that's what I see you doing. You know, you're just being smarter. And, and I think, you're kind of the same boat. Like I found that I really enjoy business. I really enjoy th- thinking about this th- different strategies and how to do this and how to do that. And then, you know, watching Brad like program all this, this new Blossom. equipment and blah. <laughs> yeah. Do all this cool stuff. I'm like, man, that checks a lot of boxes for yeah. me. You know, it quality of life's a big deal, man. If I, if I can, if I'm going racing, but I know my business is crumbling or I know I don't have the money to be there or like, or that I'm gonna like, I'll just be miserable doing yeah. it. I don't want, I don't want that. Like that's actually what burnt me out a lot of the times. Was like I had this obligation to go to the race with the, you know, the the people I was racing with and like how everything was going. Like I just felt this huge obligation to do all this stuff, and it just completely burnt me out to where like I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And I think mean, sometimes you don't realize that because like I mean, when you wrecked Uncle Sam. It was like an involuntary. You kind of mentioned that earlier. Like it's an involuntary. Like okay, I have to pause racing yeah. right now. But it's like the stuff that comes out of that. I, I told him I was like, as long as you come back and your car is faster and you've learned and you're in business, like a year and a half is a very very yeah. minimal time to like take one step forward, step back to get way far forward. And that's the thing. As long as you're like doing something that's yeah, like, yeah. so much. And sometimes taking a break. Like I had to take a break in the second half of the year, and it's like you find what you actually enjoy and like it reminds you like oh that's why i like doing that or like you yeah can find new things to do and it, it's good sometimes yeah to take a it's like a healthy back. it's a healthy involuntary pause but it like it almost like shows you the way like if you're not gonna see it here i'm gonna slap you in the face with it this is the way, like <laughs> yeah that's just god's way of showing me like okay if you're not gonna take a break i'm gonna make you take a break here. <laughs> wham here's the wall, here's the wall. <laughs> that's just brown <laughs> county bro <Yeah. laughs> oh. that's dude i've been racing brown county my whole life it's just yeah. that track's not that bad it's just bumpy. Yeah. It's gotten a little bumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's kinda, Big tires don't like it. Yeah. No, I, I was, I think Tara and I were standing with Alex when that happened. No, no, no you, no, you no, were no, on the hill. I was standing up at the top. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I was standing with Nick's dad, and I watched all of you guys running and crying down there, and me and his dad are just like, he's a wall. He's on fire. We're like, well, everybody's down there. Might as well walk down now. Yeah. Sure it's okay. My wife, my wife, this is how much my wife loves you yeah so we're up there and i'm i'm actually i had just got out of the car so i had those like sfi 20 pants on <laughs> and we're standing up on this the that the hill area yeah and you wreck and she said jason go get him i'm like what do you want me to do like she basically pushed him down the hill yeah. i've seen a video because like somebody shows a video and i just see you i see her hands on her your, her hands on your back and you're like fumbling down the hill and you're like <laughs> Like, he's gonna yeah. be okay. Like, I, but that was, she's like, You gotta get to him. You got down there, though. <laughs> yeah, I did. You're yeah, huffing and puffing. Down there really quick. Yeah. We just kind of, everybody thought I was there. Like, they don't care. <laughs> but it's yeah. just me and That's the way my my dad's always been like that, though. Yeah, like, be all right. I know yeah. my dad. I know my dad loves me, but he in his head, he's thinking, like, What am I gonna do well, if I get down the there? Like, fire. you know. He looks okay. Yeah, it went out pretty fast. <laughs> Honestly, man, the wreck, when I hit the wall, I was like, Man, the the pain's gonna be bad. Like my front end's gonna be tore up, but like I'll bend some stuff back and I'll be able to make next round. And like I'm sp- spin backwards, like my whole strut and a arm just go bouncing by me. And I'm like, 
did I really hit the wall that bad? <laughs> and like, I'm trying to steer and like, I didn't even know it. Like the wheel came up and I shoved it back in acting like that was going to help me steer. And then I see fire and it was bad. <laughs> but like the, the hit wasn't hard. It looks way worse than it was. Yeah, the, the guard, guard rail. The, the soft, guard rail really gave away. Yeah, and ru- <laughs> the rusty guard. I'm rail. lucky. It, I'm lucky it didn't flip. That's the main thing. There's a big chip out of my tire right by the bead lock, and I'm talking. These are 36 inch tall tires, and like it folded that whole tire over. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it hit the rocker. Like it basically hit the body on the ground. It folded that tire over. I'm just glad it didn't. Yeah, that would have mm-hmm. sucked, but. Either way, yeah, man. And like the past year, and like I've told her and I talked to her dad about. It, I'm like, if I look where I'm at, where I'm at now versus where I was last year, like mentally, business wise, physically, like everything, like I can't even fathom how far I've come. You know, like it's awesome. That it gives me hope for that. That's why, like, I think that's why I've been okay with not racing. Like a lot of people think I'm not racing because I'm just following her around or like trying to ride her coattail. I'm like, no, man. Like I've literally like. Even when she is home, we barely talk, you know, or she's gone. Like, we don't talk till late. You know, she works all day. I'm working all day long. You know, I help her dad sometimes. I work, I'm work. i working on my buildings, trying to ship parts at the same time, like scouring Facebook Marketplace at the same time. <laughs> like, for the deals. Yeah, dude. And it's like, Four you know. Camaros and G-Bodies. Yeah. <laughs> so many people, they just, Tattoo you know, machines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people, I mean, people just assume what they want. You know, they assume what they want to you know want to be true but yeah. they just you know some people like drama and all that but no man like stuff is good i'm excited that's why like i said i'm excited for the future like yeah i don't i don't feel like i'm in a hole you know i feel like i'm building right now yeah and i think life a lot of times is you, you know you're climbing you're you're climbing a mountain right and we're all trying to get to the summit and like we think i think when you start climbing the mountain you think that you have your path laid out mm-hmm. And you know, there, dude, there's boulders that fall. There's things that happen that you adjust your path. You got to take, you know, you got to take a break. You know, maybe sometimes because something happened, whatever. But like, we're all climbing the mountain, you know, and and you have to figure out how you want to do it. Yeah. And uh, no, it's it's awesome to watch, be a small part of your guys' lives, and just watch you do it. It's cool. Um, what do you What do you think like? For both of you, like as you've grown in popularity, stuff like that, what's the biggest challenge of that? Like, it's exactly what I've been thinking the whole time. You're saying that whole spiel. It's enjoying the process, and I was thinking to myself as you were talking about the mountain and everything. I was like, I want to say that that's why I enjoy your company and your friendship so much, and like I value it because you're the person that I feel a lot of time like if we're walking up the hill. You grab me and you're like, hey man, turn around. Look, let's look at this. Look at the view. Look how far we've come. Like, look how you climb, you know, climb that rock down there, and you didn't think you'd get over it. And like, how valuable just the journey is. And like, look at the people that are with us and like stuff like that. I feel like that's the hardest part to do. You know, I think it takes a lot of humility to do that, and a lot of wisdom and like respect. And it's very hard to do. I get that. Thank you. Mm. I like them scenic viewing areas, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's hard to do a lot of times, especially when you have a schedule like hers. Like you know, she she was just gone for over five weeks, and then we were at you know we were home for two days. But then we came here, and now she's going back to California. Yeah, so. there's a lot of truth to that. I think that is one of the hardest. Like, and it was it was a lot easier too when the schedule wasn't as bad because you have time to like stop and think about like oh I you did enjoy this. the wins. You I did this, and I did that, and like oh that that was really cool, you know. Um, but now it's like, I just realized the other day, I was like, oh, I'm not doing enough. And I was like, I've just been on a five week run. I got to do some really big things on my bucket list of like, i like getting to host the SEMA bank, but I just got to host that for like industry, which was a very, very, very cool opportunity. I didn't even have time to think about that yet. I just did a 10 day rally with my sister in the desert. Didn't have time to think about that. Like, so it's taking enough pause to like recognize the stuff that you've done and be grateful for those opportunities but it's just i think it's keeping yourself in check as you're going um i have some really good people in my life that keep me like you know very tied down and humble and sometimes i'm a little too hard on myself because like a lot of times yeah because I, I like one i'm like oh, I, one i'm not doing enough or two like did i did I do enough for that person? Did I do yeah. enough for this? I mean, like, she thinks sure. everybody's mad at her all the time. I'm yeah, like, that's dude, my you're killing <laughs> it, you know? Yeah. So it's just like making sure to, you know, not let yourself get too far away with like thinking about um, 
like, don't, don't get an ego, but at the same time, like, not dragging yourself down too much to think about, okay, yep. I am doing enough. You can always do more, but, you know, just, like, keeping yourself in check. But I think a lot of that, like you're saying, has to do with the people that you surround yourself with that makes a huge yep. difference. And I think if, if I could say one thing, I think something very valuable for you to learn would be to pat yourself on the back more, you know, like, <laughs> like give yourself some credit and like enjoy the small wins, which I mean, I understand it's hard, but it's cause you do so much. And like, you have this, what like time? just unreal or, you know, this relentless drive and passion. So it's like, it's, it's easier to see outside looking in. Like we have this talk all the time. She's like, you just oversimplify it so much. I'm like, but to me, it, like it looks simple. Like you should be enjoying this. But then like, I do the same exact thing when I'm like, under pressure and doing this she's like nick yeah we talk about this all the time i'm like oh gosh i'm just as bad you know like it's it's always so much easier when the foot's on you know when the shoe's on your foot or whatever that saying is you know it's easier to see from the, out, the outside looking in it always looks so much simpler and like sometimes i think it's healthy to simplify things and take them for what they are and just enjoy the process but that's just like the the big question of life like how far, like how, how much do you enjoy it before you start doing the next thing? So, well now, like, like, uh, I'm rolling into my mid thirties and I, and I, you know, I think when I was younger, when I was like mid twenties, starting this place, you're like, you're so hungry to like get it going and you just yeah. want to get to the next step that like, there's so much that I didn't take time to savor that I'm like kind of bummed at myself now that mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I wish I would have took a little bit more time to see what was happening. And like, um, so yeah, that's my active journey too, is like being, you know, as my kids have gotten a little older, kids are great, like time stoppers. Like I don't want it to go any faster. I want to figure out how to slow it all down mm -hmm. and like, just really slow it down, you know? And like this year, like we've had there, Martin Conley was on this podcast for you guys and he was talking about winning and, and, and eating cupcakes at the end of the night. He's like, you know, when we win, we get cupcakes. And like those small little things, mm -hmm. you know, like when we we won uh, we won MPK forty two this year, and like the end of the we got down the end of the racetrack, and all the boys brought down Modellos and salt, and you know Ricky didn't have one, he but you know he he was still part of the process, and we all just chilled down there for like twenty minutes, thirty minutes. We didn't have to go anywhere. We're just enjoying the wind, you know, yep. and. Like looking at the people we surround ourselves with, or or when Rick won the the tricycle race this year, and Danger they, Wheel Boy, <laughs> proud of you, Ricky. Yeah. You. And they played uh they played the Soldier Boy song, <laughs> and the whole crowd was dancing. Like, oh, that's cool. And they're all singing the Soldier Boy song. Rick it has this big belt, and like, <laughs> man, I've just found myself sitting there like, like crying, like, yeah. wow, dude, this is like. What a moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I want time to stand still. What it's like a pure moment. bliss. Yeah, what a moment. It's like, like a drug. That's why people do it. It's like a drug, man. Yeah. That's but cool stuff. there's so many people that can add into that. That's what a lot of people don't get. Yeah, it's it's and it's way better to do it with your homies. Yeah. Right? Like, if I was standing out there in the middle and there was nobody else with me, what? That, yeah. It's no. not that cool. The top's not fun when you're alone. Well, that's like people ask me, they're like, what's it like traveling by yourself? I love when I get to travel with, like, I work with my family for the most part, you know? And, like, my sister, <coughs> she works for me. And when I get to do it, like, where I'm traveling with, like, got my group with me, I'm like, I don't care where we're at or what we're doing. Like, I don't care if it's 2 in the morning or we're winning or we're losing. Like, I have mm -hmm. a good group with me. But then, like, sometimes I have to travel by myself, and that's where it's like, okay, that wasn't as fun, you know, being by yourself, so... Definitely makes a difference. But to your thing about, like, those moments that you get, there was this year um, when I got to do land speed racing, I got done with the pass, and I pulled over, and you're on the salt for, like, 15 minutes by yourself where you're just out in this, like, white oasis of just nothing. It and feels no so there. fake. You know, the, the chase car can't come get you because you just did 200 going down, and they're limited to, like, 15 miles an hour. So it takes forever for people to get down there. And that's one of those moments where I sat there and I was like, like looking around and I'm like, wow, like this is a really cool place. Like I'm surrounded by some really cool people, but you just have those moments where you just get to like stop and like soak it in. And that was one of those this year, but it's definitely cool. It's, it's a, that's great. That's a cool moment. <laughs> yeah. I would love to go to the salt. Yeah. If anybody's watching this, would want to put me in a salt car and 
We, we let Brad too, didn't we? We're, we're in. <laughs> You want to go with me? Yeah, let's do it. I'm working on a deal with a guy right now. He's got a red, he's got a, a white and blue surgeon. Oh, and it looks perfect. like Uncle Sam. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be getting the car. So, yeah. I, well, and I think now, even like, I think a lot of times people want to wait till later in life to do those bucket list things. Like, I mean, I started on my bucket list a long time ago. Yeah. And like, I want to keep checking them off, yeah. you know, keep, you know, and some of it's car related. Some of it's, there's a lot that's not, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we, we say it a lot, like, man, life doesn't surround. It's not just cars. There's yeah. a way. There's a lot of a lot of other things out there. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. It's funny because the other day we walked in her building. She just got her brand new glass roll up doors in her building, and like we're walking around. We last November we tore up a bunch of her floor, and her dad said something about like, oh yeah, this and that. And she's like, that's been a year. And he goes, you've had. It's been a year since we tore these floors up. We're like, yeah, it's been a year. And he's like, that's scary. And he was like totally like it almost like he looked scared like it's been a year like yeah, yeah he's like I can't believe how fast a year goes oh, that's and it's crazy. crazy how fast the time goes and it's like taking the time to enjoy those moments like on the salt or you know after a win I think is big because time flies by so fast that's one of the reasons I quit my job my bo- like my old boss. He was like, you know, he's very frugal, very by the books and all that. And he's like, well, I should be able to retire when I'm 50 or whatever. I don't have enough money to travel the country and go racing. He raced and all that. And, like, I had, if you see this, Todd, I'm not saying anything bad about you. But I was like, by the time I get to that age, like, if I do all the stuff I want to do, I'm not going to be able to go travel. Like, I might not be able to go travel the country. So I'm doing it now. Like, I'm, I'm doing it right now because I don't know if I'll live another 50 years or five minutes. Like, I'm doing it now. Yeah. No, I'm with that, man. How many times do you see people retire and then, you know, a few weeks later they have yeah. this crazy diagnosis or something? And I don't know, man. I want I want to do it how we want to do it now. Yeah. Right. It, life's too short, dude. And that's why, like, I told her. I was like, finally, I just told her. I traveled 16 hours to a race just because she was going to be there. And That's true. I finally was like, do you understand why I'm here? And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I came here just to see you. And she's like, nah, good joke. Like, no, you didn't. I'm like, no, I'm serious. She's like, well, that's a bold move, Cotton. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, I know, right? I'm like, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with this. You know, I'm going. I got at- the play by play about the, all of that. <laughs> I'll just let you know now. Like, I feel bad for anybody who's had to hear that story. Like, oh, 500 times. I love that story. It's my favorite story. I do. I do. I'll love tell that. it all day long. I do love that story. It's, it's like, uh, I don't know, man. You know, it's like it's like a modern day notebook. I know it's you a rom com. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like rom com of yeah, racing. That Ryan, Ryan Gosling's <laughs> definitely gonna play you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, put the tune up in the car. She's like, it's not that easy. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> then the rain it starts raining. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful scene. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Lord. Ryan Gosling would play Nick. Who, who would who would be you? Well, she's the girl in the notebook, duh. I know, but Rachel McAdams. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who else is there? <laughs> oh, she's one of the best movies of all time. <laughs> That's funny. I'm a big softy, if anybody didn't know that. All right, well, Nick, you, you got any closing thoughts? <sighs> it's a dangerous question. Uh, you got any closing thoughts? Well, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm scared to say anything. Well, maybe after Nick has closing thoughts, you have to clean them up a little bit because you're a lawyer. So. <laughs> Actually, it'd be illegally binding. I'm not, <laughs> this is all rights reserved, Nikki Bobby Inc. <laughs> you have like those last, like afterwards, you know, you leave something like a conversation like 15 minutes later, you're like, should have said that. No, oh, I was going the opposite direction. Oh, like I you're glad saying, you yeah, didn't you, say like, it? You like have those really good ideas. After that's what I'm saying. Then you say, "Yeah, I should have said this." I shouldn't have said that. No, no. Oh, anyways, I have no closing thoughts. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm just (laughs) just glad to be here, and I'm glad to feel so presidential. Presidential. Yeah, this feels very presidential. (laughs) Back to you, Jill. (laughs) (laughs) No, thank you guys for coming in and and hanging out with us. I know that you're both insanely busy, and um, you know it's really nice. Uh, to kind of put the pause button on things this weekend. You know, we had a big party last night. That was cool. Yeah. I love the big party, but it's nice to get to spend the weekend with you and um, just be part of your life. So thanks for making room for us. I know it's, yeah. It's, thanks for always making room at your house for me. Uh, you, you guys are welcome anytime. You know that. But, um, yeah, and thanks for just, without people like you guys, we wouldn't be able to do things like this that we do. 
you know, and, and because of the great support that we have in the automotive industry, it's, we're able to do this stuff. Yeah. So, well, it's you. not people like you guys, it's people like us. Yeah. It's a collective. <laughs> it's good. And with Rick with his, all of his equipment. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This yeah. whole thing going on. <laughs> That's why everybody loves Jason, because Jason gives other people a lot of praise. But Jason's like the glue that holds everybody together. I don't know about you that. You know how many friends that I've met because of Jason? How many people I haven't got mad at because of Jason? <laughs> I'm like, hey, bud, just put put yourself in their shoes, all right? Let's think about it this way. I'm like, man, you're right. I feel bad for even thinking like that I now. I've heard, like, anytime, like... Especially last year when you were going through like your business stuff, the first thing was like, I gotta call Jason. <laughs> I, I had some people I had to deal with at a race once, and he's like, I don't know, I didn't call Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I even said one time, because you were trying to figure something out, I was like, You should call Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At one point, I do know I called Jason so much. He's like, "Bud, I'm gonna have to start clocking you in when, uh, when I answer the phone." <laughs> no. no, that's good. Like I said, I value our relationship, and I value I value everybody's relationship here because, like, it's cool. You're like you're like the grunt, you know. Like you do all the work for gathering all these good people, and I just get to come here and like be funny and make friends with all of them. And then I, I'm all of a sudden surrounded by all these great people, like Jay Bird and Brad and Brad and Ricky and Todd and all of them, dude. They're just awesome. So and Brian, I can't forget Brian. You definitely the can't most tin Brian. soldier dude ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that dude. two tattoos. Yeah, two tin soldier tattoos. Yeah. He's got, yeah. But, all right, we could go all night, but. but. No. I don't have any closing thoughts except for I love you, bud, and I'm glad to be here. No, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> say, say it back. <laughs> I love you, too. Thanks. <laughs> that's good. Okay, we can close on that. All right, I think that's it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>